sacred text reading is from the book of Genesis, chapter 2. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. At the time when Yahweh made the heavens and the earth, there was still no wild bush on the earth, nor had any wild plant sprung up. For Yahweh had not yet sent rain to the earth, and there was no human being to till the soil. Instead, a flow of water would well up from the ground and irrigate the soil. So Yahweh fashioned an earth creature out of the clay of the earth and blew into its nostrils the breath of life, and the earth creature became a living being. Santa Sabaduria, Santa Palabra. Please be seated. I'm a stranger longing for belonging in this brief embodied life. I'm a stranger longing for belonging in this brief and embodied life. I remember the first time I saw her, radiant on the horizon in late May, shimmering, reflecting to my eyes the colorless reflection of frozen water and beckoning. Or was it wooing like a courtship? It was 18 years ago and I had just completed a men's rite of passage retreat in Sisters, Oregon. My heart was wide open, perhaps for the first time in my adulthood. As a newbie to the Pacific Northwest, I drove north to Portland from Sisters to visit a former classmate. First, her sisters in the Southern Cascades enchanted me, and then I saw her. Her, as in the volcano named Yeast by the Multnomah peoples. As I drove north on I-5, peering out from behind hills, trees, and sometimes buildings, I would see her, then lose her, then see her and lose her again around the, turn, around the turns in the road and the hills. I remember fearing, will I see her again? I really didn't know. I didn't know if I'd ever be in Portland again. I didn't even really know where Mount Hood really was. Why East? Why was I so enchanted? Was it her earth skin so thin, so vulnerable in her exposure to rain, snow, sun, ruach? So vulnerable and yet so alive and so awful the pulsating magma blood of the inner earth so close to the surface of earth's skin, ready to detonate an entire mountain of granite and underground water at any moment. Was I falling for her because I had to get closer to her crucible of divine change, a living metaphor for what I felt like was happening to me as I integrated my experience of rite of passage? What I did know is that I was crushing Yeast hard. I was called. I wanted to be closer to her. I wanted to know her. Well, over the past 18 years, I've gotten to know her better. But I still don't really know much about her. It's kind of like a life partner, a marriage. You think you know the person, and you really don't. I love, love walking along her north face, peering down into her 500,000-year-old glaciers, walking their flanks. Though my humanity wants to domesticate her for my ego's purposes, she humbles me in her death-dealing power. One time watching a deadly gully wash, shortly after my friend and I had just ascended from said gully, 
crap. <laughs> Another time, snowshoeing White River Canyon in blizzard conditions, only able to see from one tree to the next. Yikes. However, most of the time, my experiences of Y East have been less death defying, like snowboarding her flanks or stand up paddle boarding her lakes. Most of my affinity for Y East is it's kind of a mystery. I do know that her death dealing power and beauty makes me feel truly alive in my skin, our shared skin, like nothing I've experienced ever. In today's ancient creation story, it's easy to too quickly say to oneself, or this is what I say to myself, I've heard this story before and my brain starts going blah, blah, blah. Because I want to know the answer too quickly, confirming my biases without opening myself to the work of my mind changing. Anybody here relate to that? So let me read this part again. So Yahweh fashioned an earth creature out of the clay of the earth and blew into its nostrils the breath of life. And the earth creature became a living being. Clay, as in dust, as in non-mycelium, non-organic, non-composted topsoil, as in God's wild ruah, breathing life in what seems dead, or what is actually dead, if you co-create as a gardener, and many of you here I know do, you know that the only the top few inches of soil, I read somewhere for only five to 10 inches, I think it's less than five to 10 inches because of all the topsoil runoff, um, has organic material and mycelium and bacteria growing in abundance. And that part is the necessary stuff of life. It's just the spare skin of the top of the earth's mantle, right? Just the skin. The folks who originally crafted these creation stories were farmers. So they knew the difficulty of growing veggies and grain in plain old dust or clay. And whether you imagine Ruach literally or vis-a-vis -vis divine initiated natural process, God's life is poured out into the nostrils of the clay, life from death. This same clay that rises up from within Yi's bosom, blowing off onto the prairies and high desert, spreading through the great river valleys she initiated, the same sacred clay that makes up a large part of the soil in our garden soil right out here in my yard and in the yard that you steward, if you steward a yard. I'll change gears a little bit here. I entered adulthood 15 years and three days ago when I saw the crowning of Jack's scalp emerging from within Melissa. I was smitten. I instantly felt a tender and fierce love for this small, warm, breathing bag of earth skin, of stardust, of clay. I suddenly possessed a moral clarity about serving this beautiful, fragile, and death-dealing earth skin from which this Ruah-mediated skin creature emerged. It's a lot. That moral clarity for me looks like adapting my behavior to Earth's biosphere's needs, not the other way around. Like the song said that we sung today from Chief Seattle. Weaving intergenerational value sharing community like Levin alongside and with my children, accompanying folks who are dying and serving secular community where my children learn and play. That's just where I am today. As I was watching luminous Venus this morning, anyone else get up early and see Venus? Holy moly. Why didn't anyone tell me about this? Forget the comet, God, I thought it was an airplane landing. <laughs> Venus racing away from our star on her dizzying revolution away from Earth's skin. 
I thought about how I've been part of Levin since the pandemic ensued. At first I was numbed, figuratively and literally, isolated and perhaps spending a little too much money at Rose City Liquor Store. In the midst, I tried to educate and accompany my children and my neighbor's children through something I had no living experience to plumb. Right, right? We were all kind of like blind leading the blind. Fortunately, I had my hospice work where I found deep sacred meaning in being literally being a lifeline to people that were the most isolated, the most marginalized, more than I'd ever experienced in my 14 years. And it was really mutually life-giving, and it really sustained me. Zoom worship for me was non-connecting. I was also grieving the loss of Melissa as our pastor in my new role without her. But I knew in my bones and skin that my children and I still needed spiritual community. However, not being the pastor's spouse now granted me some freedom for discernment. No longer was I pressured internally or externally to attend weekly salt and light services. <laughs> As God is free, I could practice that similar internal liberation, freeing myself from suffering-inducing thinking that it was time for me to outgrow. I could stop trying to find the change within from outside me. No more programs to sign up for or courses would uncover belonging. I would not discover my longing to belong in doing things, achieving things out there. And over the past three years, I finally learned, at least I hope I learned, I'll keep learning, right? That I can only save myself, as the poet Mary Oliver says. I can only save myself. In other words, how I relate to myself in my circumstances is as important, or maybe more important, as what I'm doing. So, I can give up all my salvation projects for me and others. I feel like that right now, this, right this second, but I'm not gonna feel like this tomorrow, so I'm just gonna roll it in. <laughs> I can practice trusting my hidden wholeness, embracing my self-acceptance, and being in the natural divine consciousness. I can be open and available to whatever spirit is moving among our beloved community and city. Finally, just maybe at 55 years old, I can finally begin embracing being from and contained by sacred, life-giving, death-dealing Earth's skin. Maybe this stranger can begin to belong to this brief, mysterious, and fleshed reality alongside you.